Hello, welcome to Smell the Flowers Yoga. My name is Jessica Flowers, and today I'm going to lead you through a practice. We will be standing for this practice. Um, you don't even need a yoga mat, but I have a yoga mat there just to demonstrate, um, and you won't need any props for this practice. Like I said, we'll just be standing. We'll be going through some gentle exercises, and today the theme for our class is the science of happiness. So we're going to be talking about happiness, how we feel happiness in our body, how maybe we experience happiness in our mind, and how we can combine what we think in our head with what we do with our body and really um, facilitate that feeling of happiness. And for this, to start out with, I encourage you to get a note card like this and something to write with because what scientists have found is that there are three keys to happiness. I'll show this here. Hopefully this um, doesn't show up backwards for you, but um, scientists have found that the key keys to happiness are pleasure, engagement, and meaning. So what I encourage you to do is write those three words, pleasure, engagement, and meaning on one side of your note card. And then next to each word, pleasure, engagement, and meaning, I encourage you to write three to five things that you find pleasurable, three things that you find engaging, and three things that you find meaningful. And you can pause the video now, so you can take a minute or two just to think about that and write those things down. All right, so hopefully you've had a chance to think about those things and Oftentimes, when we think about happiness, we automatically go to those things that bring us the most pleasure. That might be like eating ice cream or chocolate. But what scientists have found is that actually for long-term happiness, it's the things that, bring, that are more engaging or meaningful that lead to the long-term happiness. So, we often think about those little pleasurable things you might think of as like self-care, but really what self-care, sometimes what it means is that um, we need to do what our body needs, not necessarily what we want. So what you can do with this list of things that you find pleasurable, engaging, or meaning is look at the list and see if there's any item that kind of fits in each of these three categories that you can tie together in some way and maybe you think of an activity that you do that kind of checks all three boxes. And if you have something like that, that's great. You want to try to engage in that activity as much as you can or as often as you can for that long-term happiness. And we're going to have an opportunity to set intention for our practice. So you may, as your intention for your practice, say, I would like to do more of this, whatever it was that you identified there. Now for our second activity on the other side of your note card, I would like you to write down three strengths that you have. Now there are various different lists of strengths that you can find online. You can do uh, surveys that will help you to identify your strengths. But some um, possibilities, you might be really creative or artistic. Maybe you're a really engaging or funny person. Maybe you are very courageous or you might be a more cautious person. Maybe you're very kind or you might have an ability to be very forgiving to people. Maybe you have a lot of energy. 
that might be your strength is that you are full of energy. Now I'd like you to, hopefully those were some ideas, some that resonated with you. Again, you might pause and think about this a little bit longer. But we're gonna take these three strengths and turn them into just short little phrases. These are oftentimes called affirmations. And to make it more active so that you really embrace your strengths, you can put the words I am in front of that word that you identified as your strength. So you might write on your card, I am brave. I am loving. I am hopeful. So just take a minute and do that. Again, you might pause if you'd like. All right, now we're gonna use these affirmations during our practice. So you might keep that handy if you um, can't keep those three things in your mind. And then after the practice, I encourage you to take this note card and put it somewhere where you'll see it daily. Maybe you could tape it to your mirror because what the science again has shown is that when we use our strengths, we are happiest. So we oftentimes may see somebody else's strengths and say, oh, I really wish I were more brave or more outgoing, um, more creative. But what helps uh, with our happiness is that we recognize that we have our own unique strengths and our strengths are important too. That's part, part of who we are. And if you embrace your strengths, then you'll be happier. So let's uh, come to standing now and we'll explore this a little bit with our body. So you might think like, how do you feel in your body when you're happy? You may feel light in your mind. Your mind may be very clear. Maybe you have a smile on your face. You could notice in your chest that your heart just feels so full and light. So just kind of think about that for a minute. And what are some other emotions that you might feel and be able to experience in your body? Maybe sadness. When I feel sad, I know I oftentimes I kind of like curl up like this. I tuck my, my head in and I just feel like kind of curled in. If you have, if you learn to recognize what your body's doing when you're in a certain emotion and you want to shift that emotion, so you want to shift your sadness to feeling happy, happier, then you can recognize what you're doing with your body and just try like opening up your shoulders, bringing your shoulders back, lifting your head up. Already I feel like much better in my body. That's not to say that sometimes you won't be sad, of course, we all um, have periods where we feel sad, but if you recognize that that's going on for a long period of time and you want to kind of shift your way out of it, learning to recognize what you see in your body and change what your, how your body is expressing that can be another way. Now, being angry or frustrated is another really good one. Usually your fists are really clenched. You might be clenching your jaw, maybe holding your breath. So take that, you just clench your fists, clench your jaw, maybe raise your shoulders up really high. You're like, got so much frustration, so much anger. And then just take a deep breath or let that air out. Open up your hands, let your shoulders drop down. And you may notice that now that anger, that frustration isn't quite as intense as it was before. So that's kind of how we can use our body to shift our emotions. Now what about the words that we tell ourselves in our mind and how those affect our body? Let's explore that a little bit because I think this is a really fun experiment to do as well. So we're just going to really simply, you can inhale your arms up overhead 
however you like. Maybe they come out in front or out to the sides. You might rock forward and back on your feet as you do this. Just inhaling up, exhaling down. Now try saying to yourself, my arms are heavy, my shoulders are tight, this is so boring, aren't we going to be more active? Okay, now just pause. That probably didn't feel too good once we started using words like that, huh? All right, let's try switching the words that we tell ourselves as we're doing this activity too. We'll try the same motion with our body. We're just gonna inhale, lift our arms. Now try telling yourself, my arms are light. They're just floating through the air like feathers, floating up and down. So light and airy. My shoulders feel great. They're very fluid. This is the easiest thing I've done all day. Great, and let your arms rest back down. Because do you see here, there with that little experiment how the words that you tell yourself in your mind affect your body? It's pretty interesting. So if you are like working on a homework assignment or a work assignment that you really aren't enjoying, instead of telling yourself the whole time, oh, I hate this project, I wish I didn't have to do that, I'd rather be doing this, what if you just try telling yourself, like, I can do this, I'll make it through it, it's all right, this will be, this isn't gonna last forever, and just see how that makes the activity go. All right, thanks for being patient with that. Now we're gonna get to some of our yoga. So I'm just going to move my little board out of the way and you may want to have those affirmations that you wrote with your strengths somewhere nearby so you can see them or maybe just take a moment and glance at that to refresh yourself. All right, so we are going to start with that similar inhale up arms up overhead. You could come up on your toes if you want. And then as you exhale, you're just going to draw your arms down. You're drawing your shoulder blades together in the back. Inhale your arms back up. And then just draw your arms down. Like imagine that you're pulling that strength in. Okay, I am strong. I'm going to use my strengths. I am caring, I am kind, one more, I am brave. All right, you can let your arms rest down, maybe just do a little bit of shaking. Shaking is a really good way to get any like negative energy that you don't want to be feeling anymore, you can get that out. All right, and then we're gonna come back. We're gonna step our feet a little bit wider and we're gonna do a posture called bhavasana or ideation pose. So this is where you can take that intention that you identified with your pleasure and meaning and purpose. And um, this is where you could set your intention to bring more of that in, into your life. So for this posture, we're gonna inhale arms up and then you're gonna take one hand and slide it down the inside of your arm as you bring that down to shoulder height. And this hand kind of sets over your heart area. And then you're gonna slide it back down and up and your arms are gonna cross over to the other side. You're just gonna slide down the other arm, bringing that hand over your heart. You can almost imagine that you're bringing that intention into your heart. And then your arms come up, and then you're gonna exhale, bring your hands down in front. 
And each time your arms come in, you could bend a little bit in your knees. You're going to inhale your arms back up. And then this time you're going to exhale and bring your arms behind your back. And you could again bend your knees a little bit. You can have your hands pointing down or maybe your hands point up or do something like this. All right, so that's one round. That whole sequence is that Bhavasana. So we'll start again, inhale, arms up overhead. You're gonna slide your hand down, coming over your chest. Inhale, back up. Swing over to the other side, sliding your hand down. You can bend into your knees if you like. Inhale, back up. Bring your hands down in front, bending into your knees. Inhale, back up and then your hands come behind. All right, that was one more round. We'll do two more, just like that. Inhale, arms up, sliding your hand down, pressing that intention into your heart. Inhale up, slide over to the other side, bending if you like. Inhale up, hands come down in front. Inhale back up and hands come down behind. Okay. One more, inhale up. Slide one hand down the inside of the arm, bending into your knees. Inhale, sliding your hand back up over to the other side. Inhale back up, hands come down in front up and then hands come down behind. Great. So that's just a nice little way to set that intention into your heart and it's also a really good way to just sort of feel along your body. Using your hands kind of helps your body feel where you are in space. That's a sensation called proprioception. So it's a nice way to do that now you can just sort of like do a little bit of swinging. And let your, it's a nice way to let tension go. You can imagine that tension is just swinging off your arms. Nice and relaxed. You can lift your opposite toe or your opposite heel of the side that you're swinging towards. All right, and then just coming back to center. We're going to come into warrior one pose now. I'm going to turn sideways. You can stay facing the camera though. You can step your right foot back and or forward and your left foot comfortably back. Your left toes will turn out a little bit. And as you come into warrior pose, you're just going to bend into your front knee a little bit. So just kind of feel what feels comfortable distance for your legs there. And we're gonna inhale, arms up overhead. We're gonna exhale, keeping that front knee bent, pull your arms down, just like we started with, pulling that strength in. You'll inhale your arms up, and then exhale, float your arms back down, and you can straighten your front knee. We'll do that a few more times. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, pulling down, bringing that strength in. Inhale, arms up, and then float your arms down. And one more time. Don't worry if you're going faster or slower than me. There's no magic number here for the postures. Then you can step your left foot back up to meet your right. Just pause here for a few breaths, maybe noticing if you feel any different sensations from side to side. And then keeping your left foot forward, you'll step your right foot back. Turn your right toes out a little bit. Make sure you can kind of bend comfortably into that knee. You want your knee tracking about over your second and third toe. And then we'll begin. So inhale, arms up as you press into your back foot, bend into your front knee. 
Exhale, draw that strength down. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, float your arms back down and straighten your front leg. Do that a few more times. Inhale, up. Exhale, I am strong. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, float back down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, I'm curious. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, float down. Great. You can step your right foot back up to meet your left. Maybe pause here for a few breaths. Just noticing if it feels a little bit different now that we've done both sides. All right. And now we're going to do a little indoor hiking. So we're just going to work on our balance a little bit and do pretty much like a hiking or a walking motion. So um, I will try to mirror you, but it doesn't really matter if we get off sync with each other. So you can inhale, raise your right arm and raise your left knee. And then as you exhale, float those back down. You can bend into your legs a little bit, shift your weight over to your left leg and then raise your right knee and your left arm. And then we'll just shift that back over to the right foot. Inhale the right arm and the left knee up. Setting that back down and shifting the weight over to the left, raising the left arm and the right knee. So just walking back and forth a little bit like that Working on increasing your balance. Might feel a little bit uncomfortable, but that's all right. You're strong, you can do this. All right, and then set that back down. Just take a pause there, maybe do a little bit of shaking or that swinging if you like that. Next, we're gonna combine those two things together, our warrior one with the knee raise. So you can start with your right foot forward, your left foot back, and we're going to, as we inhale, you're gonna shift your weight into your front right leg you're gonna raise your right arm and your left knee is gonna come forward and up. So we'll do that. Inhale, shift, lift up your left knee and exhale, set your left foot and your right arm back down. We'll just stay on this side doing that a few more times. Now if you want a little more challenge, you might you inhale, raise your right arm and your left knee. As you exhale, you can switch your arms raise your left arm back up as you set your left leg back down. One more time. This time you can stay here with your left leg wristed, lifted, building that balance, a little bit of shaking, that's all right. Your body is trying to figure out where you are in space. If you're feeling pretty comfortable here, you might try circling your ankle or extending your leg. Just a few more breaths. Feel free to put your hand on a wall or something if you're feeling really unsteady. All right, and then you'll set that left foot back down. All right. And we're just gonna shift sides so you can. I'm just gonna turn to the other direction. You can do that too if you like, or just step your left foot forward and your right foot back. Right. So we are going to, as we inhale now, shift our weight into our left leg, bring our right knee up along with our left arm. All right, let's go. Inhale and exhale, setting that right foot back down. Inhale, left arm, right leg. And if you want, you can bring your right arm up as you set your right foot back down. Okay, 
next time we'll stay lifted. You could bring both arms up if you like and circle that ankle. Extend your leg if you are feeling very comfortable here. And take a few more breaths. And then you can set that leg back down, float your arms back down. Nice job. All right. All right, from here we are going to give ourselves a hug, especially during these times of isolation. You may not be getting as many hugs as you normally would. So it's always all right to give yourself a hug. You can just take one hand on your opposite shoulder and cross your other arm across. Maybe just close your eyes and feel this nice sensation. You might do a little bit of rocking or maybe rubbing your hands if you like to do that when you hug someone. And then we're going to stick our feet a little bit wider. Your toes can turn out a little bit. And then we're just going to fold forward and we're going to shift our weight from side to side, doing a little bit of swinging. You could, as you swing to the left, pick up your right heel if you want to get a little more movement into the swinging. You can look over your shoulder as you come around. And then coming back to center, let your arms fall down. We're just going to switch our arms and do that again. So usually we have one side that feels a little more comfortable and one side that feels a little less comfortable, but it's good to try to get that balance. And sometimes we need to work on feeling a little more comfortable with being uncomfortable. So we can do that with our body by sometimes doing the position that feels a little less comfortable. All right, and then we'll begin that swinging again. You can lift your opposite heel, get a little more into it, and you may be going slower or faster than I am. That's just fine. All right, gradually slowing down. Coming back to center, you can step your feet together and we're going to come into one more balance pose here. We're going to come into tree pose and tree pose, you can think about all the various different trees that are out in nature. Each one is so unique and beautiful and has its own unique strengths. Some trees bear fruit, some trees have different types of wood that's good for various different things. So just like the variety of trees, we all have our own unique strengths. To come into tree pose, you can shift your weight over into your right foot and lift your left heel and kind of turn your left knee out to the side. You can either just rest your left heel on top of your right foot or you could maybe bring your that foot up to the inside of your shin. We're going to do eagle pose mudra. That's a hand posture with your hands. We're going to put that over our heart area and you're just going to tap your eagle wings and imagine that intention or maybe one of your strengths comes to mind. You can just repeat that to yourself as you tap, like you're installing that intention into your body. And you might find a point in front of you that you can focus on and just bring that focus, that attention into your body. I guess that can help you feel a little more balanced here. And do a few more breaths. Maybe try lifting that foot for your last few breaths. And 
then setting that foot down, letting your hands go, maybe doing a little shake out. And then we'll just do the other side, so shifting your weight over into your left foot, and I'm mirroring you, so you can take your right heel onto the inside of your ankle or the top of your foot, that right knee turning open to the side. And your hands are going to do that eagle mudra again. You can bring your hands over. Try doing the opposite hand on top this time. And then you're just going to begin that tapping again. Either taking one of your strengths and tapping that in. Or the intention. What activity could you participate in that would bring you pleasure, engagement, and be meaningful for you. A few more breaths to install that in. And then letting your foot come down, your arms come down to rest. Great work. We just have one more posture that we're going to do. We're going to come into our goddess pose. So you can step your feet nice and wide, your toes turned out. You're going to bend into your knees. You might need to step a little wider. Your knees kind of come over your ankle, opening up through your hips. You're going to inhale your arms up and then bring your elbows nice and bent. Now with goddess pose, you can have your hands pointed forward or out. This is kind of a, sort of a protective stance. So if you feel like you need to work on setting boundaries or saying no, this might be a good stance to come into for goddess pose. If you feel like you really uh, want to work more on embracing those strengths that you have and feeling more confident, you might turn your hands in towards your head and just let those strengths, sort of that energy of those strengths, kind of come into your body. If you want with your legs, you could explore lifting opposite heels, kind of shifting back and forth a little bit. Maybe you come into a little bit more balance building more strength, lifting both heels, or maybe your heels stay on the ground. Whatever option you choose is just fine. All right, you can set your heels back down. Just shoot your arms up high, coming into star pose. You can twinkle your fingers just like the stars in the sky, each one unique. You have your unique strengths to shine and bring out into the world so you can bring more happiness for yourself, more happiness for others. And then finally, you can just bring your arms down and we are going to cheer. Maybe you bring your legs in. You can bounce a little bit. Just raise your hands up and down. Cheer for yourself for taking the courage to do this practice today and work on your happiness. Yay! Thank you so much for joining me. Have a lovely rest of your day.